Okay, so I just did a quick composite of these three volcanic lava photos, right? Just softly erasing. And that's the biggest technique today is just using a soft edge 100% eraser to transition. And I just like really basic erasers for compositing so you really understand how it, how it all works. And then once you've got the soft edges all taken care of, then you can go to a lower opacity eraser if you want to blend it a little bit more. Like blending that. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to merge these three layers together. I'm going to label them all orange so you can see them. And now because I've done already mixing of these three together to make a larger asset, see if there's anything I want to change about it. No? Okay, now I'm going to merge these together into one layer. And I do that by going up to, I've selected all three of them using shift or command and clicking all three so they're all gray. Then I go up to layer, merge visible. Not, sorry, layer, merge layers. Command E. The shortcut is command E. And now it's all one layer together. I think I got a wrong layer in there because I marked the wrong one orange. So command Z is my friend. Undo that. So it's these three layers. Hold down command or shift, you can select all three, and then command E will merge those selected layers together into one. So now, now I can treat this all together, and I can move it, and I can move it down through my layers using command left bracket, right? And below and on top of the jello, right? On top of the tree, and I can play with its opacity, all as one layer. And you see how that's that little flare of, of heat is kind of what I want on the jello. And so that is going to help. And then I just want to erase from the top of it at 100%. And this is what's called a heat distortion. You can even see the little ash and flame coming up from the, from the layers. And this does a little bit already to um, merge the colors together. You see how just putting that over the top of the tree helps kind of merge the tree in. And I need something else for the tree. I need some more rocks to connect it to the edge. And luckily, I have all those kind of references. Like these would be perfect right here. So at this point, even though you've filled up your composition, you might use the other references you have to fill in gaps or what I call transitions between your middle ground, foreground, and background. So all I really want from this is this outcropping here in the foreground. If I duplicate that, delete the smart layer, and do a rough selection to delete this excess. And I'm kind of making my own rock edge here. Oops, wrong layer. And I haven't seen you guys have much trouble like deleting from the wrong layer and, and not noticing it. So hopefully by, by this really kind of hands-on approach to compositing, you're noticing everything you do with each layer. And that's important. Okay, so now the final step let me place this because it doesn't quite match our composition, right? No, it does work. I'm going to shrink it a little bit. 
and move it off in front like so and rotate it. Thinking. There we go. Throw it a little bit. Right. And I want to understand all my layers now as much as I can. I've got foreground. <coughs> and I'm going to organize that. So my near foreground layers, I'm going to label as red, the top color. I've got the next layer back, which I'm going to label as orange, the volcanic rock those rocks, the lava, which I put, if I put it at a higher opacity, kind of takes over everything, right? So I have it at like 60 something percent. And then the tree, I can try moving that above the lava. Yeah, that kind of works. I kind of like how that works. So I'll keep it there. Then the jello, it's going to be yellow. So I'm going to make all of these yellow. Then the middle ground. So I want to add a little bit more uh, smoke into that middle ground to help with this area here. And I thought this one might be nice. Let's see. And so we go through the same old process, rough cut, duplicate, delete the smart layer, magic wand, with contiguous turned on. Actually, I don't need contiguous turned on for this. Select and mask. Remember the settings to soften and feather. Say OK. Delete, 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 delete. That gives me a soft edge, kind of blending. And then start blending it in on those rough edges. That gives me a little bit more coverage, which is nice. All right, so now the, the things that are most clearly not perfect are all the kind of debris around the tree I'll have to clean up eventually, and these rocks here, that edge. But before I do the refined kind of cutouts, I want to play with the colors of everything. So what I'm going to do now, I want to have everything kind of understood what level they're at. I have the background. I have the far background. I can move these any time I have multiple colors. I can select them all and put them into a group. That will help. So I'll call it the near ground. <laughs> and that will be yellow. And then the oranges. This is far more than five layers. But this will be the close near ground. <laughs> and then the red will be the close foreground. That just helps me think about them. Now these are called layers of depth. And the only one that's simple is this background rock. 
And just with the, uh, the mist, I already know that I need to take down its opacity a little bit. So I have one at 95 and I have one at 92. I move them down a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to go through those layers. It's a good time to save, just Command S. I don't have anything outside here anymore, so I'm not gonna crop it completely to the edges, but I'm going to crop it pretty severely so that I save all of that memory. But my real composition is still within those guidelines. And it is meant to match my sketch, right? So now what I'm going to do is play with the color. And sometimes to do that, this is optional, but it really helps to have it framed in white, just like it will be when you print it. So what I'm going to do is make a new layer on top of my close foreground. I'm going to use my rectangular marquee, and I'm going to use my guides, hold down shift, and just make a frame around my image. So I'm not deleting or changing any pixels. I am just filling a frame with white. And you can see how much that can help you kind of isolate and see your composition for what it is. And mine's pretty colorful and interesting, but there's, there's some aspects that need work for sure. All right. For one thing, just with that, I might want to bring this rock forward. So I can do that easily enough, right? And I'll, I'll cut out more from it, I think, later. Or I can try that right now. I can just do something like this. Select the inverse and duplicate it. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna play with the colors going through. And so I'm gonna turn off everything except for, and that's why it's nice to have uh, groups, you can turn things off quickly, except for the far background. And I have to ask myself, okay, do I like how that's all colored together? Because if I do, then that's gonna help me make decisions for the future. And the one thing I don't like so much are how the suns just really stand out. So I'm going to color adjust and light adjust the suns. Right now they're really strong. So I might also bring them down slightly because when you have a circle touching the edge of the composition, that's called a tangency. It's a little uncomfortable. So it might be better to bring them down a little, even if I don't see as much of them. Now I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to adjustments. And this is the order I want you to play with lighting and color adjustments. First, you go to levels. This is just lights and darks. And the one you play with is this middle slider. If you play with the ones on the end, you're gonna lose pixel information. Things will go bright white or dark black. But if I play with the slider, I can push it brighter or I can push it darker without losing actual pixel uh, difference. The other thing I can do is I can limit it. If I don't want the brights to be as bright, I can take the limiting factor and just reduce that. And that actually helps for my composition a little bit so that those suns aren't brighter than their reflections off the clouds. I can also limit the, the blacks and that actually helps. So limits are okay and the middle slider is okay but everything else be wary of in levels. Now I'm gonna play with the actual color. So the first one I want you to play with is color balance. So that's levels for lights and darks, then color balance. This is the temperature. So for instance, I can have the suns be a lot more cool colored, right? Starting with the midtone sliders. And I think you should just play with these back and forth and you'll see how to make them match their environment. Then I can play with the highlights. Push those back and forth. Subtlety matters. Then I can play with the shadows. Yeah, I'm pushing those towards more cyan really helped. It's, it's kind of sending them further into the atmosphere. 
Okay, now I like to toggle Command-Z after I do those adjustments. 